welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Gamescom here at the ESL Studios. We are in our first group of the second major of the year, Anders, and it's the lower bracket match. It's the loser match. There's no putting it nicely. It's the loser match. If you yeah. lose this match, you are out of the tournament. You are the first team going home. And I think everyone expects that it's going to be Team Wolf, although... I think there is some doubt now because Hellraisers, they got 16-1 by Epsilon and Wolf actually took seven rounds off of NIP on Dust2, which is, I mean, that Quite is way more than I thought they yeah. would, way more. That's the thing, but guys, we are live now with the game. We're not wasting any time at all. The map picked will be Mirage, and this is with the new, uh, the new veto system as well. Two bands for each team. Out of the remaining three maps, it's random, and Mirage comes up as the lucky map to finish one team's <coughs> tournament, essentially. So, who are we gonna see come out from here? One thing to note is that e the Wolf actually picked up both pistols versus Nip. So Hellraisers have got to be on their toes here. It's clear that Wolf, they know what they're about when they've got the pistols in hand. Yes, and let's introduce Team Wolf, because we really don't know them. This is the Indian team with Mithil, Ace, Ritz, Rix, and Astar, and I'm super excited to be uh, to be watching a bit of Indian uh, flavor here as well. They are going to be on the terrorist side and moving in already. Markolov missing that shot and actually does uh, be a tick down to 55, so this is a quick push to the A-bomb side, and they keep pushing down towards the CT spawn, at least taking the ramp aggressively, and I actually like this move a lot. This is really smart play from the Indians, but... Mithil is going to go down, and the bomb is planted. It's a four on five here. Oh, and they managed to back off and trade up. One kill coming in now. Brings it back to a four on four, but there's Doja with the flank. Picks up two quick kills, and that's going to turn things on its head now for Wolf. It's a man advantage situation, and make that a two man advantage now is just Hellraisers are dominating. It's all down to Doja, and Doja just... He's like, I can't leave it to the rest of you guys. Hold on. Let me finish this real quick. And that's a mistake. They're going to lose the round because of it. That's a no. massive mistake from Doja. The bomb is going to blow up and Wolf are going to take the round. So I think you're absolutely right. Doja thought, wait a minute, you guys aren't competent to handle this situation. Let me do it. And that was not the right move. I'm speechless. Oh, wow. I... Kutra also managed to get a team kill in there, which I'm not sure really. I mean, he, he killed Angel, which is really unfortunate, but... Yes, Dosha not trusting in his teammate just quite actually was a really big deal that round. Now, Hellraisers have picked up a scout and some body armors as well, which is something we've seen in the past as well. Dosha not going to get the first shot, goes for a repeat, and he's just going to keep going. Grenade reigns in, and it is going to be the first kill happening in the favor of uh, the Wolf team. Oh, man, and the Wolf just ra running through them right now. Hellraiser's not really coming up with an answer in this second round. I mean, they've got the CZs. They really are peaking quite aggressively, but Wolf are just taking over that B site, getting it with ease at, in the end, and it's practically given to them. Hellraisers with the aggressive peaks, re-peaks, just giving away frags, really letting Wolf get in here and get a pretty solid second round. If they can hold on to everybody here for Wolf, that would be huge. Going to try and get in position to pick off anybody trying to rotate off this site. And he's not going to do it. Nothing going Hellraiser's way. So that's three for three now for Wolf and Pistol Round so far in their group stage. Yes. And they managed to survive Hellraisers in the second round of this map. Absolutely stunning. Moving straight into the third round as things cool down a little bit here. We do get a, a quick chance to thank all of you for tuning in, of course. I mean, the viewer numbers already have been really cool for this tournament. And we have a bit of an internal bet going on. Now, we're not going to say what we bet for just yet. But, um, you know, you guys can try and take a guess as well. We have high hopes for uh, for this tournament. Maybe later we'll reveal what our uh, what our interning betting pool is, is like for it, for the viewer count. Markolov peaking quite aggressively in the middle here, and it's going to be some good kills coming in finally from Hellraisers as Kucha also picks up the one. But this is still a three on two. Should be manageable. Markolov getting a lot of space to get some kills here, but he's being wrapped around right from the back. I think it's Ritz coming in with the uh, Galil in hand and will take down Markolov. So that's going to be the end of it. And Wolf, they are, they're looking good. 3-0, and oh, they're on the less favored side. And you got to imagine that Hellraisers are going to be slightly shook as well from, from that 16-1 loss. So moving in to play a complete underdog team, probably the team we expect the least from in this tournament. And then being in a situation where you now are 3-0, and oh, I do still think Hellraisers are going to be able to bounce back. But um, I don't know. This is still a tricky situation to start off with. Oh, this is really rough. This, I mean, this is this has got to be shattering for your confidence as well, just Hellraisers. I mean, they should be able to bounce back. But still, let's not forget, their first map couldn't have gone worse for them. So that's that's not anything. Anything that goes wrong here is just not going to be helping Hellraisers at oh. all. It could have been 16-0. It could have been, been slightly worse. 
I think uh, at that point it really doesn't matter, does it, Anderson? It's like 16-1, 16-0. Like, uh, does it Maybe really not. make the difference at the end? And right now they have yet they've picked up one round this entire tournament so far, Hellraisers, in one map. And now moving into the second map, they have yet to get their second round. We have to see if they're going to be capable of it here. It's the important fourth round buy for the CT side. And Angel and Adrian starting off strong, picking up two kills. But then they get caught by Myth. Yeah, good return coming in there. It's going to be a four on three, and they should be able to get the bomb down. But a quick wraparound is actually in effect as well. I think that's Dojo once again wrapping up as Angel is taking some shots with the smoke. Not really connecting here, but they are boxed in. Kucha goes down. That's a great shot coming up from Ace, I believe. So right now, we're back into a three on three. Dojo moving up from behind. is making a little bit of noise. He's going to be able to take down Ricks. And now, two on three here. And he has to be wondering, and this is going to be Mythil with the spray. Mythil and Ace, and Doja just barely hanging in there. It's going to be now a 1v1. Doja has to know where Ace is. This plant is for him, and he's going to get it in the end. But No kit. No kit. Again. <laughs> They're going to have to make a run for it. This is ridiculous. Now, I mean, that's the pissed around and the fourth round. Both lost to a lack of kit and not enough time to defuse the bomb. Really painful situation here for Hellraisers. They will pick up that AWP as kind of a, you know... I don't know, what do you call it? Like a loser's prize? Consolidation prize? A consolation consolation. Prize, That's right? the word I'm looking for right there. Yeah, because he's going he's gonna to hold it close. He's like, this is my AWP now. And he's going to you know, hope that it actually does something for him because right now, that's all they've got going for him. Going into the fifth round, Hellraisers, they lose the, cru they lose the crucial pistol, essentially. And then the fourth round buy, which is so important for them as well. And let's not forget, this is a slightly CT-sided map. We need to be expecting to see big things out of Hellraisers. These are the guys that need to be chaining rounds together and really making Wolf work to get anything on the board. And right now, Wolf are off to a terrific start. Four rounds on the T-side of Mirage. Hell, with the, how Wolf are playing right now, if they pick up six or seven rounds, I think Hellraisers are going to be hard-pressed once the, once the uh, half switches. And the really, the really weird thing about that last round was that Hellraisers had Dosha coming up from behind with the flank, and that's usually that's supposed to be a really powerful position for the CT side. They were boxed in the uh, the Indians. They were they really couldn't do much of anything, but it worked out for them anyway. So that also I think speaks to just their skill at actually killing people, which is good news, of course. Markolov goes down and sort the window here, and they have that grenade still, or that AWP still in play, but it only has four HP on Doja right now. Yeah, Doja is definitely very <laughs> low, but Angel getting two good kills, and this sets it up for Adrian. Now he's waiting around the corner. There's three guys now alive on this B site for Hellraisers, and this is their great opportunity here. Adrian picks up one, and this is all down to Ritz now, 1v3. He's got the AK, but he can't seem to find the shot, and 30 seconds left. Walking onto this site does not leave him a whole lot of time to work with here, especially with how patiently Hellraisers are playing this. Only Doja going to peek, and he gets the headshot as well. A really good bounce back, obviously, and a much-needed one for Hellraisers, making it 4-1. to one. And that's exactly what uh, what the doctor ordered here. Going to be moving into the sixth round as, um, as Wolf can still pick up uh, plenty of rifles here. They do have the money for it. They are going to be pressed after this round. They have spent quite a lot of money in... Uh, here in the sixth round, so we'll see if they're going to be able to uh, to win it or not. Obviously, if they do now, that's going to be even more painful for Hellraisers. But um, that AWP seems to seems to work well for them. Oh, that would be a, that would be a calamity for Hellraisers if it actually happens because their money gets reset. They're back down to just struggling to put buys together, and when they need to be the ones who are taking control of the half as the CT side, that is worst case scenario time. But Hellraisers have now they now put two rounds. Through the tournament, we have to see if they can now get the second round here in this map, and it's so crucial that they do. But Game God Wolf, they're moving up onto this A site. It's going to be an A play after all. Adrian with a nice peek, manages to pick up one kill. He could get a second one, and he will. Kucher managing to support as well, and this is looking fantastic here for Hellraisers. The defense seems to be pretty solid. Yeah, definitely a nice job here. One on three for Ritz, really difficult, and Angel will take him down in the edge of the smoke there. Didn't quite cover him. So there it is. Second round picked up by Hellraisers, and more along the lines of what we expect from a team of this caliber on the CT side of Mirage, just holding down that A bomb site. Moving into the seventh round, it will have to be an eco. They did not get the bomb down, and they just don't quite have the money for it, which is really fair enough. I mean, again, they are on the less favored side here, so I don't think they're going to be too panicked at the moment. No, they shouldn't be too um, stressed out, really. I mean, four rounds, if they can keep the pressure up on Hellraisers and not block each other at the B door, that would be good, too. But, uh, I mean, if they can keep the pressure up at Hell on Hellraisers right now, this is this is where they've still got the move the, the room to basically put Hellraisers in a really tight spot. If they can win this follow-up round here, Wolf, or at least do some significant damage, force Hellraisers to spend that money. So long as they can keep Hellraisers' money under control, Wolf are never too far away from picking up another two rounds in this half. And six rounds could do it. I mean, they've they've had all three pistol rounds so far in this tournament. For themselves, that is. 
Yeah, they have. And obviously, I think we know what the statistic says as well. If you win both pistol rounds in a match, it's like 78% chance that you can actually win the game. Of course, that's pretty changed some since Lerp has made that uh, statistic over at HLGV.org. Because since then, we've had the CSET 75 come into play, and I bet that's changed a lot of uh, how the game works um, after the pistol rounds. But still, it's worth noting that those pistol rounds really do carry a lot of weight in the game. Hell, the Deagle as well. We're seeing more and more teams uh, go for the Deagle. Hell, Angel loves to go for the Deagle, so we'll see if it comes up. And actually, just speaking of Lurpus here, it's actually we've got uh, just Mithil left. He's going to be walking right in and going down. But but just a quick you know shout out as well. If uh, if you guys haven't yet read the interviews that Lurpus has been doing over at HLTV, mm -hmm. then you are you're cheating yourselves, guys. If you want some information about these teams, um, you know before the tournament, before we see them play, there's still you know a lot of groups coming up. Go and read those interviews because they're really well done and yeah. it's worth it. It's worth your time. Vox Eminor, definitely go and read Vox Eminor. Especially the Sponge interview. Yep, the I, sponge interview is I one enjoy of the best. that so much. And I yeah, instantly developed a bit of a man crush on Sponge as well. So I'm going to find him later and congratulate him for that. That was a really good interview. Now it's moving into the eighth round as we do have a four on three scoreline. Markolov with the AWP and Dosha with a dirty auto sniper in hand. Going to take down Ritz and Mithil and. Ritz, or say that was Rix. Ritz is going to fall right there to Angel, and we're in a two on five. A one on five race. Not a good situation. No, and Hellraisers definitely seem to be finding that uh, that confidence again. We do lose one man. That's Angel, who's trying to hunt down the remaining member here. But Ascent, Alive, and Delpan should get caught by Markolov. Markolov not going to land the shot. In fact, he gets shot, and this is going to fall apart here. But still, Hellraisers managing to put four rounds on the board. It seems like they finally figured out how to make everything work. And I guess it took a score of 20 and an AWP to make it happen in the end. Yes, and you said, you know, regaining confidence. I think that's that's the key term here that we're looking for. Confidence is great, but but they still need to be on the on the right side. I don't want to see Hellraisers just, you know, think, oh, this is easy. Now we've got it. Because the one thing they really can't afford to do right now is, is you know, underestimate Wolf. That's just, that that can't happen. Well, every team here in this tournament, it's, you cannot take anybody lightly or they will punish you for it. And we've seen that all tournament long, but Doja, Angel already getting frags. And this is just oh. gonna be the straight up YOLO to B site that's going to completely fall apart here. Wolf, not a whole lot of room to work with. Doja finds the last frag. And that's four for Doja actually. So a very clean uh, anti-eco for him. But this, yeah. this, is, this is what it's all about at this point. Wolf, if Hellraisers show the same weakness, if they can't actually lock out the rounds, Wolf will punish it seems. They do have I mean, especially Ace right now, we can see with, with 10 kills, actually only outdone by Dosha at 16. I think many of Dosha's kills have been uh, so far eco frags, which is still good, but not um, not quite the same. So I think Ace is is maybe the guy to watch for here on Wolf, and I, I believe he also had a really good performance against NIP, as far as I could tell on the forums in our brief break here. Now, moving into the 10th round, they do have rifles again on the terrorist side. Let's see if they can make something happen. They're trying to get a little bit of mid control here as Angel is going to challenge him with the M4. And... Again, this is actually not the style I would like to see from Hellraisers. I, I would much rather they, they just do a little bit more teamwork instead of individually peeking like that. Individually peeking, and that's the thing. You know, the fact that Angel actually does not get picked off. There's one good shot coming in, however, from A-Star. Picks up Doja, and that's the, that's the thing. Op versus Scar 20. Yeah. He drops quick enough, it's going to win that duel. So Doja getting picked off, and you know, there's something that we've seen as well is that Doja is doing a lot of the work for Hellraisers, getting a lot of big frags and really giving them the opportunity to get back into this game. Him out of the picture now. Wolf, they've taken some damage, but this is still a 4 on 4 situation. They can run it back. One thing is that Kutra, as we just uh, were shown by Vendetta, who's doing the opsing here, is moving up uh, to the T-spawns. That's obviously hugely important. And that kill for Markolov is going to give them away that they're in the middle. So right now, Hellraisers know everything that's happening. Ritz coming in with a good kill on Adrian, but this is a two on three. And here comes Kutra from behind. Mid-air picks off Ritz, and then next falling is going to be Ace. So there was... There was basically a timer on that round, like a kill switch almost. And as soon as, as Kucha made it to the T-spawn, that just gives away so much of the game. So nice movement from Hellraisers. That's that's a really healthy sign. That's, yeah, exactly. That's what we need to see them do. Basically push. If it starts to slow down like that, start pushing to get the info, right? And push in through a T-spawn, push through A-apps, you know, push towards V-apps. We have to see that Hellraisers are able to just go out on the map and get the info when they need it. Right now, we're actually going to have a quick play from Underpass, in fact. Or no, it's Markloft actually just still sitting up there. I thought that he jumped down for a second. Well, could have. That's definitely not an uncommon strat. To get that info, I mean, it would have paid off as well, seeing as how Mythyl now runs through. But it's control of mid. And I do like this from Wolf, however. It does really seem like they've got an idea, at least, of how to really play Mirage. You know, get control of mid and then try and close in from there. But Kuchar live on the A side. He's going to turn this into a slaughter. Well, 
A star actually picking up those two kills right now, so that's going to make it a three on four. But Markolov is here, and he's going to pick off Ritz, no problem. That's a second kill coming in for Markolov, and that's A star going down. No bomb plant happening, and Angel with the auto sniper jumping up on the toll booth, going to take down the last two players, and will make it a seventh round for Hellraisers. So. Uh, uh, initially, I think a really good plan, as you said, mid control, got one guy distracting from the A ramp, and then you try and push that A bomb site. So actually, um, in theory, really well uh, played out. And they got the two opening frags, so it was looking good, but they didn't properly smoke off Markolov, and that I think that was really what, what caused the big issue there. That came back to bite them, yeah. for sure. As they were pushing in, then Markolov with the easy alley onto, a, onto that site. After that, you know, Angel going for the cleanup, but that, that's more like icing on the cake at that point. It's going to be so tough for Wolf to come back in that situation. And now, once again, Wolf, no plant for them. Despite the fact that they've lost so many rounds in a row, they're still not getting a plant. So they decide to go for a bit of like a half buy here. CZ 75 flashes, and they're just hoping to do some damage. But Doja alive in the B site is wreaking havoc. Three kills, not going to get the fourth. No, finally put to rest up against that couch, and it is going to be the auto sniper in play here, just mowing down the remaining members. No big surprise, they were on an eco team wolf, so really not much they could do, but Osha also, I think, showing again slight signs that he's not really respecting the wolf team all that much, just pushing up like that, maybe a little bit tr tricky. Which, I mean, right now it's paying off because Dosha is at 19 kills, which is definitely sick. So I guess he has the room to be a little bit crazy. Yeah. But they got to be careful. I, yeah, I still think this is a little bit dangerous for Hellraisers to, to take it too, uh, to be too lenient at this point. It's true, but then, like, you want to see Doja actually just playing kind of Doja, right? Like, he is that guy. As soon as he has that confidence, he is that guy we can really expect to see trying to throw his weight around. And again, he's doing it. I mean, he's pushing into B apps, just getting that info for his team right now. He's going to be saying, Hey, by the way, guys, I'm not seeing anybody up on this side of the map. He's even going to bait it to make it look like he's still on that site with that smoke behind him. I mean, this is just really nicely done here by Hellraisers. This is so much information. And we can see they have one guy rotating over now, Markoloff, rotating in through CT spawn. They're going to put four guys holding solid on this A site. And Kutcher already closing the distance. Gets two. Yeah, has to pull out the Deagle here to get the last one. He's not going to get it. Will be Ricks to pick up two kills, but they will fall eventually. And a little bit of a shame for for Team Wolf here, because what they were actually aiming for is the really standard A execute that we've seen so often. Is that a terrorist auto sniper that he's that picked up? I think is. it is. <laughs> All right. Well, the standard A push is a really good idea. I love it, but it, it isn't enough. And now we have, as you're pointing out, two orbs and one auto. Actually, they're going to get rid of the auto sniper. Angel just stole it just for the sake of it. Is that a miss by? I, mean, I think they have the money to be thrown. I mean, I don't think they're too worried about it. There is an off, however. A star will re peek and pa catch Markolov, who's trying to get his underpass there. And I would say more signs from from Mar from Markolov and, and Hellraisers here that they're really just they're playing slightly casually at this point. Just that they're relying heavily on the idea that they can probably in a one on one battle win against the Wolf players and and just taking it from there. Because I don't think normally you would see Markolov peeking like that. Put it put it this way. Just taking the repeat so aggressively and not sure. Doja alive on the B site, however. He's going to get one, and he gets two. He's still alive, and that's a real problem there. Rix is now going to get caught in the B apartments. And so far, Hellraisers have just, have just bounced back in this game perfectly. Ten rounds on the board. If they if they finish this 11-4, that's very good work from Hellraisers. Wolf desperately need to pick up this last round, but they just don't have the money for a full buy here. It's going to be rifles, but three Galils, limited nades. So on a mental level, I you know it's already surprising. I actually I would have been very disappointed if Hellraisers couldn't recover from the two really bad rounds that they had in this game, where they lost because of no kit, which is really frustrating. The pistol round and the fourth round, uh, or the third round, but but it's still good to see. I mean we have to we have to sort of think about Hellraisers t taking a 16-1 defeat. So it's good news that they managed to do that in this round. It's a three on four right here. Markolov pushing up. Kucha gonna get the kill on Ace and. He's going to get saved right there, Kucher. It's going to be just Ritz left. He goes down, and we have an 11 4 half on our hands. Hellraiser is defending really well for uh, for the last, uh, for the last what, 11 rounds? 11 of this rounds. Game. Yeah. That was that was just a perfect turnaround from Hellraiser's. Landing all the shots. Markov even wired so tight that he's shooting at teammates at the end there. He's just like, I'm shooting everything that moves. It's got two legs. It's moving. Mm. I'm shooting it. Well, uh, that's. I mean, in a way, that's good, <laughs> but not if you do it like uh, Doge, like uh, he did in the pistol round. Who was that got the, the kill? I think that might have been. Was, was it, it was it Kucher who got the uh, team kill? I think it was. Oh, it's taking down Angel. Now. Yeah, we can't see. Anyway, that is the first half, of course, and. Team Wolf, they obviously were struggling after those four rounds, but um, I think they they shown us that they have a, a decent grasp of what's going on here. 
they're definitely not just walking aimlessly around the maps. It's just that they happen to be playing Hellraisers, which is a team that pretty much functions on the idea that every single member of this team is basically a superstar in terms of aiming and, and playing the game. Essentially. That's, that's kind of tough to play against sometimes. Well, that's that's what's really scary is that, you know, it's like when players like Doja start waking up, like Doja is the point man for Hellraisers. He's the guy you want to be seeing just doing so much work like he's done here in this game. Yeah. I mean, aggressive peaks, sure. And you were, you could kind of criticize that. You were just like, okay, you know, with that scout, right? You know, second round goes for the scout and he just peaks and peaks and peaks and peaks. But he's basically forcing himself to get into that situation where I am going to get these frags. It's going to happen. And then the round that follows, I mean, he just kind of goes out of control. So... Hellraisers, they are going to switch over to the T side. The thing is that if Doja's feeling it right now, if he's got the confidence going into the T side, I'm not really sure if anybody on Wolf is going to be able to put a stop to him. We have to just see if, they, if Wolf can keep the streak strong with the pistols. That would be a terrific start. Of course it would. Um, it probably would secure them an 11-7 scoreline before anything else happens. So that piss around, I think you're right, is, is what we need to be looking for. If you're just joining us, that a big welcome here. This is the ESL 1 2014 Cologne Tournament. $250,000 in the prize pool, $100,000 first place. And we have every single team that is the best in the world in their region coming into this one. It's going to be absolutely sick. Um, oh, and a global feel to the tournament as well. Bringing in an Indian team as well is absolutely great. And, and uh, an Australian they, team. An Australian team, you're right. Can't forget about Vox Seminole either. And two US teams. Yeah. The Freedom Bird will fly. That's going to be later on today as we cover all the groups. But uh, so far, let's get into this second uh, pistol round now. And we have to see if Hellraisers are going to be able to get the drop literally on Wolf. They're all going to be coming out of apartments. And Myth, they spot it. Three guys out. And they're getting overrun. It's Wolf Ace trying to stand his ground in CT Slope. And he just gets caught out in the open. Really unfortunate here for the counter terrorist side because actually the setup they had was a good idea, but it, what Hellraisers did was almost a direct counter to the setup they had. And Adrian wanted to knife, then it will be Doja picking up a triple kill. So basically, what happened this round for for the Wolf team is that they had this stack going on, looking towards the A ramp. And if someone had been walking in, they he would have been basically in the line of a firing squad of two people, but. They didn't come from a ramp, they came from apartments, and that meant they were essentially in the wrong position, which is, that, that really caught them. Well, that's not a common strat either that we see, really. You know, no, you expect to not. see two guys up in apartments, and they'll come running yeah. out. Maybe one guy like Adrian, you know, that's the thing as well. Hellraisers, they really favor the apartment play, as Angel right now is heading over there with Adrian. Angel with the Mac 10 is he going to manage to do this? He's at 75. Oh, and he can't manage it. Mytho will get caught. And this is going to be two very quick kills, in fact, for Hellraisers to start this second round. Markolov trying his luck with the Deagle in the middle. And I think the bias as well from Hellraisers this round is, is an indication, again, that they are just uh, they are just feeling their way forward here. Two AKs and then, you know, as you said, Mac 10 MB7, and the Deagle. Not really the standard second round buy coming out here from Hellraisers, put it like that. Yeah, I mean, just to, you know, in case you're wondering why they would go for these, go for these, uh, these SMGs. I mean, it's still, it's like 600 bucks in the, in the bank is, if you get a kill with it, right? So that's the whole point. That's what they're thinking. Like, I'm going to farm up a whole bunch of frags. But if you don't farm up frags, which is what we're seeing here, I mean, Adrian gets nothing with the MP7. Angel gets one kill with the MAC-10, so that's good for him, but... You know, it's still like, why not just go straight for the rifles in that sort of case? That's that's kind of the discussion that's happening right now, as far as you know what you should be buying in that second round. Yeah, and I, actually, I'm hearing more and more and more teams. Um, I remember talking to Fetish from Dignitas, and I think he said, "Well, we we should be buying more MP7s if we can sneak some in. We should be trying to do it every once in a while." So, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see that, but definitely an idea. Kucha and Dosha picking up here, and Wolf still do not have rifles to fight with, just the pistols here, as Ritz is going to go down, and will be end of the round really, really quickly, and this time the MP7 and the Max 10 are going to pick up a kill as well, so it's starting to slowly pay off, but um, now they're obviously going to exchange them for AKs anyway, so part of what they saved is going to be spent rebuying anyway, so that's, that's part of the problem as well. It's not an easy calculation to make in that sense. Moving into the 19th round, they will have rifles. No AWP picked up here on the counter-terrorist side. No AWP to fall back on, but still rifles, very limited nades. This is going to be extremely tough here for Wolf. It's going to come down to the aim battle, and so far Hellraisers are kind of just bullying them, throwing their weight around, really just taking the peaks, taking the duels, taking the aggression, and there you go. Kucher, as I say it, overextends and gets punished by A-Star, and A-Star gets the headshot as well on Angel before getting taken out. Yeah, interesting. And they need the return. There's Rix picking up the bomb as well. And now he's just going to have to stay alive and call for backup here. This is not a bad position coming in here. Angel goes down. 
And now he's alone, though, in a one-on-two. They have plenty of time, Hellraisers, to try and sniff him out here at the back of the site. And he's trying to move into a good position. He will be taken down by Doja. Very unfortunate then. Could have been great if he could have turned it into a one-on-one. -on -one, but they were creeping up closer. And that is probably the nail in the coffin here. That was the one round, apart from the pistol, that Wolf had a chance to somehow bring it back here. We could very likely be seeing a 16-4 uh, win here for Hellraisers. Yeah, a clean sweep, essentially, after the first four rounds here. Wolf, they need to get back on this board, get find some way, but it's just, when it comes down to the duels, Hellraisers are coming out ahead, and the aggressive style is paying off. I don't think Markov connected with that shot. He was just shy, but Ritz will get caught by Kucher out in mid. He will. And up here it's Rix, ready and waiting. Gonna take some shots against Adrian, but can't quite get the kill. And now he's actually very low on bullets. Gonna go down to Dosha. And we're in a three on five. The bomb is towards that B bomb site. And still some members from Hellraiser is actually creeping up the middle. So they're all over the place right now. And Wolf just don't really have the uh, manpower left to deal with this. Ace is actually gonna catch Markolov jumping up there. But they're still gonna be able to drop him. That's a teammate from Hellraiser's. Everyone picking up a kill. And Wolf can't quite manage it. Good game, well played. They are really well mannered. And and I mean, we were talking earlier and I think we said we, we'd be impressed if they could get something like, you know, five or six rounds in total yep. in, in, in this tournament. And already they are up to 11 before they unfortunately have to exit, losing to NIP and Hellraisers. But considering where they came from, I'm actually still, I'm actually still I'm pretty impressed. I'm impressed that they managed to pick up pistols yeah. I mean, versus Nip as well. They, they yeah. picked up pistols, they even picked up eco rounds versus Nip and then... Uh, when they go up against Hellraisers, they still had a strong start. So Wolf showing that they've that they've got the possibility, yeah. right, of really competing. They just need to have a bit more practice and need to have a bit more time. It's still great that they were here and competing. So that means here we're for Group 8 in terms of the brackets. Dan, Dan is Wolf out maybe somewhat predictably, but I don't think in the way that people have really yeah. imagined. So that's actually good news. And that means for the winner's match, we're going to have... Um, Epsilon playing NIP. Epsilon NIP, but that is not going to be today. The format mm -hmm. so far, guys, just to make it perfectly clear, is we're going to go through all four groups today, but it's going to be one match from the first round and the lower bracket match, basically, the loser match, to decide yeah. who leaves first. Tomorrow will be the winner match and the consolidation match from each group. So now Nip, you know, Nip and Epsilon, they, they got that strong start, obviously. They mm -hmm. won the crucial first game to give them a safety net, but they have to wait all day and then go into it tomorrow, basically, and, and just prepare for tomorrow, essentially, because it's all going to come down to one map for them tomorrow. Who gets that first seed in this group? Yeah, pretty important stuff, of course. And, and IP, they, they need it, I think. They need to, to, to get back on top where they, you know, they've been so long. And IP losing those two pistols as well versus Wolf. I mean, that's yeah. shaky, shaky. But then again, you know, the thing is that NIP, they've lost to Epsilon. G3 group stage, they yeah. lost that first match 16-14. Epsilon looking just terrific today. So if they if Epsilon play at the same level tomorrow, Nip are going to be hard pressed. Like oh. Nip are first, or you know we we expect them to get first seed in this group. But put I think they're like, going to have to run for it. I mean, put it like this: the Epsilon of of Gfinity and the Epsilon that we just saw against Hellraisers are two totally completely different, beasts. different teams. Yeah. yeah, that's there's no other way of putting it. That was impressive. Well, but we'll see. If, I mean, if if uh, the RNG gods give it to them, man. I mean, if they give them Inferno again, anything is possible. Indeed. That's obviously the veto system coming into play a little bit here. Right. So the, the last map is random. In case you're wondering, right, you know, we'll go ahead and give you the veto system because this is a seven map pool. And we have two new maps, or three, I guess, if you want to look at it that way, because cash has now been brought into the map pool along with the classics. Train has been taking, taken out. And now we have two new maps, Overpass and Cobble, that have been added in. So the way that the band works right now in the group stage, which, which is just best of one matches, is each team gets two bands. So it's, you know, band, 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 band. And then the remaining three maps, it's randomly picked, basically, which map you will be playing that one map on. That crucial one map is randomly picked from the remaining three. Yeah. So there it is. Definitely very interesting. Yeah. And, um, well, that means we're going to have to move on to the next match soon. Second group. This, yeah. Is they're all so good, too. But it is going to be Group E. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the groups again real quick yeah. just, to, uh, just to get an idea, guys, what we have in store for us here after this break. Group B coming up next. Yes. LDLC, Navi, Copenhagen Wolves, and London Conspiracy. And I, re I mean, I think I would have to put uh, Navi and LDLC as the favorites, but yeah. I, have, I am not confident in that. I think this could go a lot, a very, very differently. Copenhagen Wolves are definitely not a bad team in London Conspiracy. Well, they have... Anything is possible. This I group. would say they've beyond proven themselves at, at this right. point. Ideally, what I would love to say is LDLC and Navi, no discussion. That's it. Those guys, they, that's first and second seed right there. Are you feeling confident in that? I think, I think it's almost like a quarter for every team as to who's yeah. going to make it out. Like You have four teams so that can make it out of this group. 
the it's going to be a bloodbath. Like, who knows who's going to be the first team out? The first game we'll be covering on here is going to be Navi versus Copenhagen Wolves. Mm -hmm. And then we will obviously catch up with London Conspiracy and LDLC no matter what. Um, so so we're, we're going to catch all the teams from each group. And that's a really, really cool idea of this format is we can actually see how everyone does. But uh, that is going to be the next game coming up, guys. Yeah. So quick break. And when we come back, we will be getting into Group B of the second major of the year here at Gamescom.